Women tend to confront in order to connect and men experience that confrontation or that direct approach as criticism and control. So a woman might come to a man and complain or bring a problem to him just when he comes home from work or whatever it is. A man that wants to help a woman and create a solution is not understanding why you feel so upset when he's giving you a solution to your problem instead of understanding it first. Once you've connected with them, that's really all they want. Hey, 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 guys, it is Allison. I am the host of your show, Allison Answers Mission Awake. I cannot wait to sit down with you today and go over how we are going to crush the mediocrity in your life that has been plaguing our society since the beginning of time. I cannot wait to have a real deal conversation that includes intelligence, fun, excitement, and real actionable steps to make a real difference in the life that you're living now and making it into something you can be damn proud of and excited to live. Sit down, put on your damn seatbelt, and get ready for the ride of your life. There's one tip that's really, really helped me in my life. And I asked myself the question, where am I standing? And I read this a long time ago in one of Melody Beattie's books about codependency. And what I read was that it's so important to switch perspective. So, and I've always thought about this in relationship to all different sorts of relationships, situations, people in my life. When I look at them and I say, and I draw a conclusion, and I think that they are doing a certain thing because of a certain maladaptive reason or because they're angry or because of whatever it is that I am perceiving about that person. It is incredible what a little, little shift in perspective can do. I always ask people, the clients that I work with, to take a little look, to go around the back door and get a different view of what you're looking at. Melody describes so beautifully this incredible... Uh, she was at, in Sedona looking over a mountain view. And I was recently in Denver, Colorado. And what I noticed was that every single step I took, there was another majestic view. And it wasn't the same as the one that I just was looking at. And it's the same way in life. We can look at a person and believe all different things about them. And then we can take a little different angle and look at them differently from a different vantage point and we see a whole other unique human being, a whole other set of circumstances. It is so important for us as human beings to not judge because as my late stepmom would say to me, which I honor to the deepest part of my hearts, she would say, no one is in the position to judge anyone else because they do not have all of the information. And that is so true, isn't it? We don't have all of the information about the other person. And sometimes the other person doesn't either. As a therapist, one of the things that I notice very quickly and what I share with the other therapists is that someone coming in with a knowledge about their life where they say, oh, you know what? I had a great childhood. And they believe that. But then through just having a conversation, just talking about it, they start to notice little areas of their life that was jammed up where they're like, oh my goodness, wow, you know, I felt so sad at that time. I felt like no one really noticed me. There's so many different parts of a person that are hidden away even from them. So the number one thing for all of us is to just let go of any judgment of ourselves or others. I know that I can be so hard on myself when I make a mistake, especially with human beings. And trust me, as a person who runs a multi-location, you know, with a lot of employees, I have made my share of mistakes with other human beings, interacting with them. You know, I'm a, I'm a person, I'm a human being. And some days I have one mood, another day I have another mood. But I try to maintain um, a steady stance. But, you know, there are times when you make a mistake. And I have in my life been very hard on myself for those kinds of things. What I have learned, though, there's something beautiful about understanding that we're all going to fail. We're all going to get confused, do the wrong thing, say the wrong thing, be interpreted 
completely different than what we're actually meaning in our heart. And I think that if you really listen to a person and if you just take their words at face value, you're probably missing a whole bunch of communication. The thing people are saying things, they're doing things, they're interacting in ways that are a result of their inner world, their inner fears. Usually when someone does something that you don't like, if you get to the heart of it, you find out they didn't mean what you believe they mean, and they're usually operating in their own insecurities. I know whenever I hurt someone else, it's not because I'm a hurtful person. It's probably because I feel afraid of something or I feel um, uncertain or who knows. The thing is, is we want to be kind to ourselves and kind to others. In a world where there's a lot of turmoil, it is so important to just stop, to breathe, to slow down, to trust that maybe possibly we could believe the best in other human beings and believe the best in ourselves. Because if I look at myself or I look at you, if you're regretting something or if I'm regretting something, that points to our true values. So let's say you, I don't know, you said something insensitive and then you feel badly about it or you regret doing it. If that happens, look at your regret as something that's pointing to who you are really as a person. It's saying, wow, you know, I have the value to, to care about what other people feel. So it's important in our lives to continue to stop being so freaking hard on ourselves. It's a messy world. There's messy things that happen. And a grace to ourselves and other human beings can make such a difference. Think about what it would mean to your child. Think about what it would mean to your spouse if you gave them the benefit of the doubt, if you believe the best in them. There's a, a Bible verse that talks about love is patient, love is kind, you know, that it doesn't keep a record of wrong. One of the things I've noticed in, you know, marital counseling and in different kinds of situations is that people will, they'll start to develop a case against another person. So every single thing that happens, they see the person through that angle that view that says, oh, they're doing it because of this. And then I can add that to my case because the lens that they're looking through is the development of whatever that case is. Let's say they want to develop a case that the person is lying or they want to develop a case that the person is insensitive or that they're emotionally unavailable. Any little, per, any little moment they can take and add to this case that they're developing against another person. But again, we want to look back and say, wait a second, the person who's developing a case is developing a case for a reason. So if you've ever developed a case against another person, it's probably because you feel something in yourself. You feel insecure. You feel uncertain. You feel like you need proof that you feel whatever it is that you feel. I see that with people who are married or in a couple situation or anything, even at, you know, co-workers that let's say a person feels insecure or hurt, they may want to develop a like sort of a case against another person in order to just get some reassurance that what they're feeling isn't as scary, that it's not them that's creating it or whatever it is. They want someone to know how they feel. They want to prove it either to themselves or to the other person. But wouldn't it be fantastic if we could prove to ourselves and to others that other people are doing what they're doing, usually because either they don't understand it or they have their own insecurities and fears or that they, you know, they made a mistake, but give people the benefit of the doubt. Now, I'm not talking about somebody who's abusive or somebody who really has a true narcissistic personality disorder, like to, you know, because we see a lot situations where there are women who are almost like hostages in relationships to people who are, you know, really not well. So I'm not talking about situations like that, because that's that would take a different slant. You don't want to have to develop a case against them either, because it's not of value to you. You want to develop a case for you, for the empowerment of you, how to get free from a narcissistic trap, 
or, you know, that would be the, the way to go is to do an internal strengthening of yourself and an external like um, not where you don't allow externals to control your internal empowerment. This is a very important thing for all of us just in general is that we want to keep an internal lo locus of control. And what that means is, is that the first stop in all situations are not to react to a circumstance, to react to a behavior of another person, to react to a situation, but to go inward and to say, wait a minute, where, how am I being so affected by this outside circumstance? And how can I create an understanding of myself so I can heal and know that this is a trigger for me and this was developed inside of me probably a long time of time ago and i would be better able to handle an outside circumstance if i was more healed on the inside from whatever it is triggering in me then the next thing is you also want to be able to not allow the ruling of your life the dictatorship of your life to be based on external events, people, places, and things. Because how many of us, I know I spent the majority of my early years in my life being completely dictated by other people's opinions, thoughts of me. If I didn't even know it, spending a majority of my life wondering what other people thought and adjusting myself to that so that they would think a certain way about me. I did that in my teen years, um, in my maybe my early 20s. And it was a time where I just, I all that mattered to me was that I was liked. But it didn't matter to me if someone else, if I liked the other person. It was more important to me that they liked me. And it was more important to me that they were not mad at me I didn't mind being mad at them. It was better for me if I was mad at them instead of them being mad at me. And the interesting piece is a lot of people, it, it can be primarily women, that women will absorb and take in and kind of press down their own anger in order to, without, and they won't share um, their feelings or ask for something or be direct about something because it's more important to them that the other person is not mad at them than to deal with what's bothering them. And this is a classic situation in, especially with young women in dating and going out with, with, uh, with guys. It's a big, big deal because so many young women, and I shouldn't even say young women, so many people date and go out with people and all they're thinking about is does this person like me am i valuable to them they're spending the time creating something in their themselves looking a certain way acting a certain way pretending to like something that the other person likes instead of being themselves hey hey, hey guys how are you i want to just give a shameless plug of my book i would really want people to have a good look at my book and to understand what it really is. I used to be ashamed to plug my book. And then I realized how is that right to keep the information, the 30 years of experience that I have, the eight years of education, the, the trauma that I grew out of and learned how to manage and how to manage emotion, all the training I've had in neuroscience and quantum physics. How can I keep that from the public. So it's not, you know, I used to think it was like something I should, you know, be humble about, but being humble is silly when you're keeping things away from people that they need. So what I want to tell you about my book, and I hope that you um, do get it because I think it will really help you. I've gotten a lot of tremendous feedback about my book and that it's really, really of great value to a lot of people. And what it is, it's an interactive read. And there's inside of it, there are there's journal entries. So as I'm teaching and going through the book and teaching you how to create the life you want by understanding how you're wired, how your thoughts, feelings, how your words, how thoughts are things and the neuroscience behind it, and how we are programmed from the time we're zero to seven years old to live a life of mediocrity or a life of 
poor design because of meaning that we attached to events when we were children that just became our programming. What I want to tell you is that there is a way out and it's a simple way. It's very simple. I believe in the simplicity and the grace in healing and that it doesn't have to be a big work. So I would love it if you'd get my book. It's a best-selling book on Amazon and it's my first and I encourage you to get it. It's called The Wake Up Call, an interactive read for building the life you want. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Thanks so much for being on the show and let's get back to it. So they are morphing themselves to be a person that's well-loved, well-liked, gets attention, who's seen as beautiful, instead of looking at that person and saying, do I like that person? Do I want to spend more time with them? Are they a person that would would be would fit well in my life is that something would i add value to their life but would they also add value to mine would we be a good match how would this work if we were together those thoughts are very often put to the back burner once the person likes them and 3 months passes and the true person starts to leak out then everybody's shocked and then they're hurt and then they blame the person. You know, there's this whole thing that happens and it would be so wonderful if we could accept ourselves and not even in the whole, I see that people, when I see people talk about, women talk about men in such a disparaging way, you know, all men are dogs or whatever, all these different, you know, references to men that um, all the, they're all players. It's just not true. And men saying things about women, you know, all different things. They're crazy, whatever. We are a little crazy. But the, the point is, is that it's really important that we value the people who are interested enough in us by being ourselves so that we can then give a true picture of all of us, you know, whether it's our mistakes our, our failures, our wins, our successes. You know, really, honestly, if you think about it, who are the people that you like? I know the people I like are the people who are just true. Uh, when they tell me about their failures or their vulnerable moments, I like them more. I, I feel more connected to them. You can feel the energy of the truth. The truth is the highest form of vibration between two human beings. I always think about between two human beings, there's a space. And in that space is a lot of data, but we don't think about it. The, what is the interaction between the two? What creates the synergy? How do the two people become greater together than, than even they are separately? And these are all the things that we want to be considering in relationships, in codependency, and in, in considering, you know, how am I looking at this situation? Is it only through fear? Anything that we're looking at through fear, fear would represent itself in such a way that, oh, I'm afraid you won't like me, so I'm going to act this way. Or I'm afraid that my perception or my anger or my feelings towards you are not valid, so I'm going to develop a case against you. Or I'm, I'm so unsure of myself that now I'm going to create an image of myself that I can hide behind in order to feel loved. And then love can never penetrate that. It will never get through because it's a it's an image created around our true heart. I can tell you that the greatest experience of connection and love that I've ever had were in those moments that I shared my true core shame, my, my uncertainty, my darkest moments with another human being. And they were just there. They, they didn't judge. They just connected. So remember this one tip, guys, um, don't fix and change and try to fix women. Because when I was mentioning before that women are a little crazy, what I meant by that is that in general, women and probably a lot of men, all they want is to be understood. To be understood is to be loved. To love is to understand. And there's something about being understood that is very, very grounding to a woman. 
So a woman might come to a man and complain or bring a problem to him just when he comes home from work or whatever it is. And all they want to do is to be seen and heard and have the person understand that whatever it is, is difficult. But men, because they're triumphant and they want to fix things and they want to make things better, it's wonderful that they do that. That's how they're constructed by God to do things. And we have to be so grateful for that, women, and not criticize it. A man that wants to help a woman and create a solution is not understanding why you feel so upset when he's giving you a solution to your problem instead of understanding it first. So it's a very, very quick tip. Men, just understand the problem first. Be able to say, wow, I get you. And then ask if they want a solution. Probably the solution has already happened. Once you've, once you've connected with them, that's really all they want. Women tend to confront in order to connect and men experience that conf confrontation or that 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 direct approach as criticism and control. So I'm going to tell you a quick story before I wrap up. I think it's a I tell this story often to clients and to whoever will listen to it and the story is this is that a woman falls into a big huge ditch filled with mud and whatever she cannot get out. A man comes along with ropes, pulleys, all the apparatus to get that woman out of that ditch. So he goes, he's successful. He uses the pulley, he gets her out of the ditch. She gets out dirty and everything. She looks at him and she's pissed and she jumps back in the ditch. The man goes like this, like, I can't win and walks away. Now the woman is upset. She feels abandoned. <laughs> she doesn't know what to do. From anyone's perspective, that sounds crazy. Now, a woman comes along, sees this other woman in a ditch, and goes, oh my goodness, jumps into the ditch with the woman. They sit there. They talk about it. The woman who had walked by and jumped in says, you know, I, I could see why this feels really lousy for you right now, and just hears her. Now, they hold hands, and they walk out of the ditch together. So, and the woman is happy. So it is, seems crazy, but this is actually how it is experienced. Men, of course, are so wonderful to want to do that. And a woman is not seeing the value in what he's wanting to do. And the man is not seeing the value in the connection. So I want to just encourage you guys to stop and to think. Another thing I'm going to tell you, ooh, one last thing that's so cool. I always tell women this, that if you have a man sleeping next to you at night and you're mad at him or whatever it is, is one thing I just want you to remember. If somebody breaks into your house and they are a threat to you and your children, your family, I want you to think about who's going to fight for your life. And if that man that's next to you, you know that he would fight for your life, that he would take a bullet for you, you know that you can rest and sleep knowing that any nighttime emergency or burden would be handled by the person that's next to you. I want you just to consider adding that to your perspective of them, that depending upon who the man is, of course, and if you do have that in your life, it is an incredible experience to be able to rest at night knowing that someone else is on watch. Now, he may be sleeping and he may be snoring, but think about it. That, that is an, an added underlying responsibility that um, many men and hopefully most men take on as you know, women and children first. And think of that when maybe they forget to do the dishes. And it, I'm not saying that it's not that it's cool that they don't support the negotiation of labor in the house. But just consider that as an added value that maybe most people don't consider. So I would like to ask you guys, please, to consider liking, subscribing, sending this to anyone who's having a hard time with another human being, whether it be a child, a spouse, a coworker, try to, um, or codependency. I would ask that you share it. And I do ask the favor for you to please like and subscribe at my YouTube channel and follow me at Allison Answers because I am a busy woman and I am not 
on there trying to push this stuff on social media, but it really helps me when, when other people um, show an interest because I will always answer you and you'll always get the content first. And, and I do not monetize any of this. So it's my ask from you, if you like the things that I share, that you'd share it with others and that you would also subscribe and follow me also at Logger Counseling Services located in New York. I would really appreciate follows, likes, you know, check out what we're doing. And um, we're also at loggercounseling.com. You can just see the different cutting edge stuff that we do there. I hope you have a blessed day and I will see you next time. Guys, thank you so much for listening to the show. I just want to say to you that we are all together a part of the mission, Mission Awake, a mission that's going to stop the mediocrity that's plaguing all of us. So if you got something here today, I ask that you would be a part of this mission and you'd share it with whoever you can. Take a screenshot of the show and share it on your Instagram. If you are looking for me, you can find me on social media platform, Instagram, Allison Answers or Logger Counseling Services. And give us a, a review and subscribe if you could to YouTube. Allison Answers. That's where you're going to get a lot of content. I drop stuff every day, goofy stuff, all different kinds of stuff. Five-minute videos that just get you moving in your day. Have a great week. See you next time.